I want to make a response to Sabrina Salvati and Norman Finkelstein, who uh, describe RFK Jr.'s campaign and candidacy as lacking the credibility of J J Bernie's. And I, that's not to dismiss the argument, but I think it's worth going into for a moment. Always a value to that. And I would certainly counsel everybody to participate in that process who's willing, <clears throat> who's willing to invest the time and resources to it. So, so what he's been saying is that um, election uh, left wing candidates running in elections can uh, drive energy and focus. Um, and for people willing to invest time and resources into these electoral processes. Well, if the question is whether I think they have a, so to speak, snowball's chance in hell of winning, that's an altogether separate question. In my opinion, no. Uh, and this is not the or cold water of anybody, but in my opinion, no, for a very simple reason. It was, there were two factors that, as it were, enabled Bernie Sanders in 2016 and 2020. Factor number one was his, if you want to call it, his class struggle platform. Uh, it was fundamentally about redistributing the wealth and also simultaneously improving the lives of ordinary people. And he eventually um, came up with a set of planks, uh, Green New Deal, uh, abolish student debt, abolish student tuition, Medicare for all. He came up with several planks which reached a very broad audience, which resonated for probably the majority of the American people, and maybe even a super majority of the American people. Okay, so uh, when we look at RFK Jr.'s platform versus Bernie's platform, what we see is in the case of Medicare for all, uh, RFK has said that would be politically difficult, although if he had the right to design the system from scratch, he would definitely have that. You know, I like the idea myself of a national health service uh, if you can sort of imagine a sort of idealized British national health, anybody who's been fortunate enough to go get medical care back in the good old days. I was in the UK in 2016 or so, and I got treated for like uh, $15, uh, including medicine or something like that, $30 maybe including the medicine. But uh, I got super wonderful service in Scotland. And so that made a big impression on me. But uh the mechanisms that RFK Jr. would use is to uh, accommodate the goals of a progressive left agenda of social equality uh, by using regulatory mechanisms to ensure fairness and compet competition in the medical industry. Um, and he approaches it having been a lawyer who has sued all of these federal regulatory agencies uh, for his entire life. So uh, what Norm is going to say, if we get to it, is that RFK Jr. doesn't have a track record. But uh, what I just want to say now is that the RFK Jr. track record is having been an environmental attorney. Uh, and so he's going to submit as what he can do to be to improve the uh, management and the revolving corrupt door between the regulatory apparatus and the industry. But that was one factor. The other factor is more, so to speak, nebulous. And that was in a American, uh, American uh, situation where people are so cynical about politics, Bernie had a half century track record, actually more than a half century track record. And so he became credible because he was consistent. Uh, you know, they used to say about very, very first time. Okay, so you get the, the point. Uh, Bernie's have been very consistent since the 1960s in his politics. Um, and in the case of RFK Jr., what we have is his track record 
as an environmental lawyer, and then to, who moved on uh, and really tackled what he saw as a corrupt uh, health care and pharma industry. Uh, you know, the U.S. Uh, pays uh, vastly more per person, like double any other industrialized country. And we've now got a life expectancy uh, that is uh, lower than Cuba's, for example, uh, lower maybe equal on it if we're lucky but the I've, it actually was lower in uh in in the study i saw uh so u.s life expectancy is plunging is down to 78 right now um and there's no coincidence that even though progress has been made there's still lots of problems with health care um and then where people do have access to it uh if it's a HMO type of operation, um, they try to ration care, obviously. When you said it was 2016, people would roll their eyes and say, oh, Bernie, he's been saying the same thing since the 1960s. And in fact, that was the selling point that he wasn't um, <clears throat> trimming uh, his sales or packing in order to uh, get a favorable outcome. Okay, so this is a really interesting program and you should just go ahead and watch it. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure that it was understood. There's a easy way to view uh, RFK Jr. as somebody with a long established an honorable track record as an environmental attorney who's won many important class action suits on behalf of the public and cleaned up the Hudson River and started a you know worldwide organization of river keepers and um, so he does indeed have a track record in that particular area um, in the area of, of really defining this horseshoe platform which is anti-war anti-corruption and pro civil slash individual liberties so we have parallel interest in this in both the right. Uh, what you might call the new right or the alt-right or the libertarian right. Uh, you know, libertarian is a double word because there's some uh, libertarians or people described as libertarian that are just uh, uh, extreme capitalists. But in general, the, the sort of uh, you know, uh, uh, positive libertarianism is one more focused on trying to achieve some sort of utopia of liberty through minimal government. Uh, and so the fun thing to do is to design systems that can survive both tests, that it would be applicable in a libertarian scenario and it would be applicable in a country with a very large public sector support for the poor and a very strong redistribution of wealth towards the poor and the middle class. And the way you can do that is, for example, with cooperatives or where Bobby is looking at it. What you do is you have to be able to capture companies externalizing costs on the community that, uh, and then they reap re profits, but they're doing damage. So for example, even a, uh, 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 an alcohol shop could be said to externalize some of its costs on the community if it if it if it uh, increased uh, alcoholism. But the most extreme examples, of course, are the oil industry and polluters, um, and uh, and people who destroy uh, the environment. Uh, these people uh, need to pay the true costs of their production and. The way we do this is by viewing the earth as a balance sheet. So we value all the natural systems on the earth. Uh, and um, uh, instead of looking at the desire to reduce them all to zero and liquidate them into cash, which would be a system where there was no uh, cost to the uh, natural resource extractor or user to acquiring these materials, nor any penalty for the pollution or chaos in their mining or extraction involved. So this is called internalizing the externalities. If you can actually create good formulas for this stuff, uh, you can make 
a lot of problems of solvable. And, and we've already got through the market issue, which is like in re energy, depending on how the governments distort the market, uh, renewable energy is vastly cheaper than um, uh, uh, petroleum-based systems or nuclear systems at this time. Um, Well, you know, in the uh, libertarian movement, Ron Paul is pretty famous as somebody who tries to frame it uh, philosophically. Um, and he would agree that uh, polluting the commons uh, should not be allowed in the way Ron Paul would deal with it is through the courts. Uh, so there's, uh, but, but fundamentally, if you're willing to allow polluting a stream to be litigated through the courts, why not have a federal regulatory agency to make sure that that doesn't happen. And if it does, that it's uh, appropriately um, uh, charged, which is, uh, so you, you, it helps to improve the level, good regulation should improve the level uh, level playing field and the ability of small companies to become medium uh, instead of making those things worse. Uh, now, the other aspect about RFK's uh, credibility is for everyone who actually follows any alternate media, uh, alternate media, you know, some of it, it, it just talks about questions that the New York Times and CBS and ABC and PBS are not willing to fairly evaluate. So one of these is the Ukraine war. Uh, the coverage on the Ukraine war is terrible in general on the mainstream media. And the only critic of the war that I saw on mainstream media, uh, you know, which very rarely would be, uh, uh, what's that, uh, 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 Levin, uh, Anatole Levin, maybe once in a while on Democracy Now! or Jeffrey Sachs. Um, but in general, uh, the alternate media is very important now because on many subjects, for example, uh, the declassification of the Kennedy archives, uh, you're not going to find mainstream media delving into this to any great extent. I mean, it's very, and this for me is, I think I'm part of a group of maybe 10 to 20% of people that feel like this is a restoration of justice. If RFK Jr. really tries and he clearly has an encyclopedic knowledge and a very quick intellect, if you listen to him being debated, um, that he, through the study of his father and his uncle and their policies about peace and civil rights and social justice, uh, that he's really taken that to heart and he's got the head and the heart and he does have the track record as an attorney. So that's my message to uh, Norman Finkelstein, uh, but I am looking at his past. There are two aspects of his past uh, that I, I want to look at a little bit more. Uh, one aspect um, would be when you compare his own you know, personal life with Bernie Sanders' personal life is, is he said that he's an imperfect candidate, but that these are special times. So I agree that he's by far the best qualified person that I see right now running or willing to run who can really help us bring transformative change. And I think it's very interesting that he's following a horseshoe politics strategy, which is to concentrate on these common elements from right and left, uh, individual liberties or civil liberties, depending on if you're uh, right or left. Uh, and there are different aspects of those, and they conflict with each other, but they also have a commonality. Nobody wants to be surveilled. Uh, and these two groups, neither of them necessarily uh, want to be um, put under uh, severe authoritarian government controls. Um, so in that respect, there is a path to achieve what are traditionally left-wing and progressive goals by using regulatory science, so to speak, to make sure that companies can't escape the costs socially or environmentally that 
are side effects of their product sometimes, often perhaps. Uh, my name is Alexander Hagen. Good night and good luck.